everyone welcome back to my channel you're watching the brown feminist in today's episode i'm excited to be sharing with you some tips and tricks of how you can have a career in clinical research whether as a research assistant associate coordinator or a research nurse so before we continue don't forget to smash that like button for the youtube algorithm have you done it yet? So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first step is to get started as early as possible. You can join a career in clinical research at any phase of your life, but I've personally felt that starting off when you're a student in university is the best time. So if you're in nursing school, doing any other kind of health science undergraduate degree, any other kind of biological sciences undergrad or grad school, now is the best time to get started. And this is why. In school, there's a lot of opportunity to get involved in research. And that's because a good portion of research actually takes place by university professors. So university professors often also collaborate with doctors and clinical researchers and pharmaceutical companies and do a lot of different kinds of clinical research which you will have access to through your school. So the best time to get started is right now. You can get started as early as your second year of university. All you have to do is remember to take some of those courses that will help prepare you for a career in research. For example, take that statistics course. Make sure to do well in your research methodology course, right? A lot of these are already included in your program, whether you're in nursing, biochemistry, or health sciences. But if you don't have them, make sure to sign up for them as an elective or any other way you can. Once you've aced these courses, you're ready to start emailing your professors. Just go on the website of your school and find any professors that you see are doing different kinds of research. Google is your best friend. Once you see what kind of research they're doing, don't hesitate to talk, copy their email address, go to your school's email account and send them a quick email saying, hi, I'm in this program. I'm really passionate to do clinical research in the future. I've done these courses. I'm eager to help in any capacity. Now, the first couple times you might need to be doing a volunteering or a trainee thing, but soon enough, you'll start getting offered paid research assistant positions. This could span the school semester on a part-time basis or full-time work, paid full-time work for the whole summer. Honestly, do not get frustrated when you don't hear back. When I was doing my undergrad, I remember emailing 30, 40, 50 profs from adjunct faculty members to full-time profs to part-time profs. I even went beyond my own faculty. You can email people in other related faculties. For example, if your school has a faculty of health sciences and a faculty of medicine or a faculty of public health, they're all very related and most of them will be able to hire you as long as you're from the same school. In fact, if you're looking for work over the summer, it doesn't even have to be in your school. Look for other schools in your city, right? They might also have summer research assistant positions and they might have a shortage of students internally and would be happy to take on somebody who is as eager and as you and remembers to follow up. I remember a time in second year that I had emailed a prof who said she loved my resume and would love to hire me, but she's going on mad. But she did mention, if you're still around after I'm back in a year, we'll talk. And I made sure to put that on my calendar a year in advance. The day that I noticed that, oh, it's the time of the year that this faculty member is coming back from her mat leave into her full-time professor role and might be starting up some research. I remembered to check up on that person. I remember to send them an email said, hey, I heard you're back. I was wondering if you're going to be starting up some research again in the faculty. Is there something I can do? And soon enough, I had a full-time paid position with that professor. So getting involved in research as a student, whether as a nursing student or any other kind of biological science, health science career student in any university is the easiest way to get it. Trust me, it's easier than graduating with no research experience and then starting from scratch. Next up is to build your professional references. If you want a research career in the long run, 
your nursing or your clinical instructors will not be able to vouch for your understanding of research design, methodology, statistical analysis, and so on. So while they might be great character references about what kind of a person you are, are you committed to your work, are you punctual, they won't be able to really say what kind of a research associate you're going to be or what kind of a research nurse you're going to be. So your best shot is to keep working with these professors and other um, members of the faculty who can give you a research position and build an excellent relationship with them. Make sure they always know you're eager to help with extra projects, extra work, whenever you can. Maybe by the time you're in third and fourth year, you're actually helping guide somebody who's younger in the research team and are training them. So always say, I'm eager to do more. And they will definitely write you an excellent letter of references when you're applying for that clinical research job. The next thing is research publications. Now, this is not really essential if you're just going to start off in a career in clinical research. You don't absolutely need to have it. It's a lot more important that you know how to work with patients and you know about human ethics and things like that. But if you do have enough research experience from your schooling to have a research publication, even if it is as like a third or fourth or fifth author, um, with any professor and it actually gets published or maybe it was an abstract in a conference those are excellent to give your resume that strong research pull it means you have your clinical background you have your research background and you are the perfect candidate for a job as a research nurse or a clinical research board now if you happen to not be from a clinical background and you don't really have a lot of human subject experience excellent way of gaining this without needing to do like a full nursing degree would be to do a lot of volunteering in various clinics. Even when you're doing volunteering, you do get a lot of sensitivity training, a lot of confidentiality and privacy training. So you are able to tell your recruiters that I have the understanding of what it is like to work with vulnerable populations, to have to handle sensitive information, or at least to be around um, sensitive medical information where I have to keep my mouth shut, only do what I'm skilled to do. And these are really good things that a nurse would also know. So if you don't have that kind of clinical nursing background, great way is to start volunteering in a cancer center in a clinic in a community clinic in any kind of like hospital customer service role and any any other things like that like i know a lot of children's hospitals also hire for like a lot of the playrooms so any of that clinical experience handling patients of different age groups of different medical conditions maybe patients with dementia um even um, just uh, working over the summer in one of these um, long-term care homes, maybe as somebody who reads to patients and things like that. Anything like that that gets you in the door into a medical setting will require you to complete like their criminal background checks, some CPR training, some basic um, understanding of sensitivity and confidentiality and privacy when working with this population. So all of that will also help prepare you for a career in clinical research. Now last but not the least, and this is the cherry on top of the cake, is if you wanna go really high in clinical research, which means you're not just thinking of entering as a clinical research associate or an assistant, you wanna be like a trial coordinator, a trial manager, then a lot of different things can really help. And this includes having expertise in managing large-scale trials, maybe multi-city trials, um, having the ability to manage large data sets in, in a secure way, doing a lot of data analysis with different softwares, right? Um, handling things like a trial master file, learning how to write a research grant application, or learning how to follow a trial protocol, so all of these are more specialized and you don't have to be an expert at everything. You can choose along the way what kind of clinical research you want to do. If you want to do more trial work, like drug trials and work with pharmaceutical companies, you can begin to specialize your career 
in that way. If you want to work more in an academic setting, work with like physicians and professors and academicians and nurse practitioners and nursing professors, um, you have a lot of opportunity there as well. In fact, even in the biological setting, in laboratory settings, they often hire at least a clinical researcher um, to help with patient liaison and patient management because people working in the back end of a lab might not know all of the rules and ethics and legal aspects that go into recruiting a patient and ensuring their rights and being a patient advocate. So you can even partner with big large-scale research laboratories who are now maybe partnering with a clinic and trying to acquire some samples like blood samples or plasma or tissue organ things like that you can also have a place there so you can begin to think about what kind of clinical research excites you and then begin to develop your skill set there and again, an excellent way to do that, like I did, was during my undergrad and my master's when I was doing a lot of different um, research jobs as RAs. And those um, projects, each project exposed me to different skills that I needed to develop. There were times I was helping to write an ethics approval, like a submission, so it's an REB, is a research ethics board submission that you need to do prior to initiating any kind of project which involves humans. Um, so while writing that, I got to understand, okay, these are the skills, this is how you have to present it, this is what a minimal risk study, this is what a high risk study, and these are the considerations we need to have. And then there were others which were more like about managing cities across the country which are hosting the same trial and they will all have different kinds of problems and I'll be the one to coordinate it and make sure the study is going in a similar way no one is deviating from the protocol too much and management and troubleshooting and sub providing support to all the sites so like that kind of multi-site national level study uh, when you're implementing a clinical study it has like different challenges and you end up growing different skills right so even learning to use different kinds of softwares and do lots of data analysis is another very excellent thing that's going to be more and more in, in demand as we go forward nowadays you need a little bit of coding background to do excellent data analysis because you're no longer like limited to the tool you have and the types of analysis it lets you do. If you're able to code things in SPSS and SAS and R, um, then you're actually able to do a lot more with what you have. So you don't need to do everything. I didn't do everything. I don't know coding. I've decided that the way I want to go is like eventually one day lead my own research team, maybe as a nurse practitioner or a professor. Um, and that's that's where I'm headed. So you need to find your own path and your own story. But every single time you work with a different research team, don't be too picky early on in your career, right? Because the more you're exposed to, the more you know this is what I like and this is what I don't like. So as an undergrad student or even as a master student, keep your horizons broad and experience a little bit of everything. And once you know what you like, you will always have the chance to specialize in it when you're working full time. So I hope this video has been helpful to everybody, whether you're coming from a nursing clinical kind of background or you're coming from a biological sciences laboratory heavy background. Um, I myself have also done a biological science um, degree as well as like a nursing program. So I do understand like the completely different worlds we come from and clinical research is truly a place where the two can merge. So I hope if you're considering a, a life, a career in clinical research, that this video was helpful for you. Please do subscribe because I do plan to make a lot more videos that will help guide you through the process of becoming a clinical research coordinator or a clinical research nurse. All the best and have a wonderful day.